everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. With me today is Daniel McAdams, our co-host. Daniel, good to see you today. How are you this morning, Dr. Paul? Doing fine. All doing right. Doing fine. We're not going to be talking about the Middle East, I don't think, today, except it might pop up. Who knows? It's always in the news. That's right. But I wanted to talk about something uh, every bit as important. It is foreign policy, and it does involve what goes on in the world. But it has to do with the tragedy of uh, Julian Assange. Yeah. It, it is a tragedy. But the, it's tragic for him. But I think it's tragic for America, tragic for our judicial system. Here's somebody being accused of something. He's not even an American citizen. Yeah. He's telling the truth. I see him as a journalist. And so the, the tragedy is that if they claim he broke an American law, uh, when you think in the land of the free and the home of the brave would say, here, just come over and we'll give you time to study your case and make your defense, but we're going to charge you for such and such. Nowhere close on that. Yeah. He's been he's been holed up trying to avoid the incarceration that the Americans planned for him for seven years since 2012. He's been uh, trying to avoid it, and now it looks like they're bearing down on him that there's going to be an extradition. Now we do know that Trump has spoken out about Assange, and uh, he he's one time might have even liked Wikipedia. Yeah. <coughs> so, but he uh, he he now uh, he says. He doesn't know anything about this. But this is this is sad. It looks like there's going to be a hearing in February. And if it goes badly, uh, and, and that um, Assange may be uh, sent back to America, sent to America for a trial. And we have to remind people, he's not an American citizen. He's a journalist from Australia. Yeah. And he has reported some information that was embarrassing. But you know what? Truth is not well received when you have authoritarian governments, no matter what kind of authoritarian government, even the ones that appear to be more modest than others, nobody wants to hear the truth when they want the authority of the government protected. And we have some quotes of individuals who, in this, in, for, for our point, in the United States who are authoritarians and think that the best thing to happen to, to Assange is torture him until he confesses and throw him, in, throw him in prison for life. And there are some who really believe that. That's sad. Yeah, you know, he, as you point out, he is a journalist. He is a publisher. He publishes information that is leaked by people who have direct access to that information. That is no different than what the mainstream media does on a daily basis. Every time you open the New York Times and it says, sources from intelligence uh, tell us that dot, dot, dot. That is classified information that someone is leaking to the New York Times, Washington Post, etc., which in turn publishes that information, exactly what WikiLeaks does. Uh, but w would you think that the mainstream media, all these places that are doing just what he did, standing up for him? No, on the contrary. He's a designated enemy of the empire, so therefore they are dutifully, dutifully reflecting the perspective that he must be destroyed. And, you know, the reason we're talking about him today is that yesterday he appeared before a British mag magistrate begging for a little bit more time to prepare his case against the U.S. request for extradition to face 175 years in prison for espionage against a country of which he is not even a citizen. He went before the judge. People were shocked at his appearance. We'll talk a little bit about that later. He said, please, can I have a little more time? He did his 50 weeks that he was given, remember, for right. jumping bail. He did the time. The judge said, you can't come out of prison. You stay in there indefinitely. Until this whole thing is settled and hold him for trial. It, this is, uh, to, to me, a real tragedy. They torture him. He's, he admits that he's getting very difficult for him to concentrate. He doesn't have access to his records. He doesn't, and he has rarely access to his friends or family, almost never. Or lawyers, attorney, yeah. Even his attorney. And, and this is all done not because the United States is doing this, the British are doing this. Oh, yeah, out of the clear blue, uh, the, the Brits decided to do this. No, it's part of the deep state. And if anybody pretends they're against the deep state and they can't see or understand or want to understand that this is the deep state at its worst, the control of information, the control that exposes governments for what they are doing. And uh, we, have, we have laws, supposedly in this country, to protect those who want to tell us the truth, the whistleblower law, which is used to put whistleblowers in prison. 
you know, it doesn't help at all to, to protect the whistleblowers. The whistleblowers are used as political tools. Oh, whistleblowers, if they said such and such, uh, they're protected. We don't have to tell you who they are. And on and on. It's so distortion. It's so, such a violation of common sense. And it's disgusting to think that uh, we still want to be the land of the free and the home of the brave where fair trials. And fortunately, in the last couple of years, even even the result of this past election, and of course, they've been on both sides of this whole thing, and Trump's been on both sides. But one thing is, the American people are now more skeptical and more disgusted with the judicial system. Yeah. And it's it's so unpatriotic to say, well, you mean there could be some criminality done by people in the FBI? Yeah. yeah. What about the CIA for many, many years? They're being exposed to. So some good is coming from this. But maybe, maybe this determination to really destroy a true whistleblower, no matter where he's from, uh, is showing their weakness rather than saying, this is just ignore this guy maybe he'll go away because but no i mean they're they're really determined to destroy this man and intimidate anybody else who may be tempted to tell us the truth yeah and i think anyone who wants to understand what's going on with the assange, assange trial uh it, they should go back and read arthur kussler's classic anti-stalinist novel darkness at noon and read carefully the trial of Rubishov because that is exactly what's happened. It has nothing to do with justice. It has to do with how the state can get maximum mileage out of the predetermined guilty verdict, preferably with a confession attached to it. That's what it's all. It's not about justice. It's about managing the guilty verdict, managing the confession to get maximum mileage out of it. And that's why, if you read that, it's so disgusting. But you mentioned Trump a couple of times. Let's revisit President Trump's thoughts about WikiLeaks. And this is, talk about a damning indictment of, a, of, of, of an individual, of a president, of a, of a political leader. If we have that tape, let's roll about 20 seconds of this because it is disgusting. Do you still love WikiLeaks? Uh, I know nothing about WikiLeaks. It's not my thing. Boy, I love reading those WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks! These WikiLeaks, this just came out. This just came out. WikiLeaks. I love WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks, right? It's WikiLeaks. 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 Oh, we love WikiLeaks. Yeah, and there's plenty more where that came from, Dr. Paul. Here's the thing. why Trump should support WikiLeaks, as he did during his campaign, because all they did is expose the criminality of Obama and George W. Bush's stupid wars. Actually, by supporting WikiLeaks, it would bolster his foreign policy. But he's too caught up. He's too incapable of really thinking in a strategic way, in my opinion, and this is why he goes with the crowd on this. Yes, and, and this, once again, is an example of bipartisanship in an ugly way. Uh, essentially, both party leaderships uh, are agree that uh, Assange has to be punished and has to be put in jail. And if you take um, all the candidates on the Democratic Party for president, uh, uh, 20 or so, and uh, only one has said anything decent and reasonable, and that's uh, Tulsi Gabbard. And, you know, and, and she, she doesn't think this treatment is fair. So the Democrats, who are supposed to be the civil libertarians, uh, do exactly nothing. There's no Republican. Trump changes his mind. Uh, now his thing is, I know nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> you know, don't, don't, don't ask me about it. And yet it is our government. They, it could be stopped. It, they could drop there. There's no doubt about it. And, uh, of course, Jeff Sessions was involved when this got started oh, yeah. way back in, in, in 12. And now, um, you, you know, there's uh, the, the usual suspects. If uh, I have a quote from Pompeo as, as well as uh, Lindsey Graham, but I'll, I'll start with Lindsey Graham because uh, if, if you're questioning what we're saying, that we should be cautious about uh, not challenging some evil monster like Assange and that we're wrong on this, well, maybe they don't like or understand what Graham is up all about, and that might uh, introduce to them a notion that, uh, that, that we all should be skeptical about what's going on. But this, this comes from uh, Graham. I'm glad to see the wheels of justice are finally turning when it comes to Julian Assange. <laughs> In my book, he says, he has never been a hero. His actions, releasing classified information 
put our troops at risk and jeopardize the lives of those who helped us in Iraq and Afghanistan. Well, we could go into uh, who was responsible for Iraq and Afghanistan, but I'll tell you what. What these guys are doing and what this what this whole case is doing, it's putting our liberties at jeopardy. Yeah. And, and that's a lot more uh, you know, significant than this stuff that he's preaching. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I, I mean, it's hard to not conclude, to use an old phrase, that someone like Lindsey Graham really does hate America. You know, he thinks he's patriotic. He wraps himself in the flag. Everything he said there is a lie, as usual. He hates our justice system, or what we're supposed to have is our justice system. He's not a patriot. He's the opposite. The question that we had, and we talked about it before, why, why the fear? Why are they so fear of, afraid of someone publishing the truth about these wars? Why Just one person, just one WikiLeaks, why are they all so terrified? And it really is, they can't have one dissident, not even one. He has to be punished. And it really is. I hate to, to beat this horse, but it is sort of like Soviet times, you know. The Soviet Union was chugging along in the 50s, and then they had this sort of deviationism by Tito. And that was a huge thing. They had to, you were a Titoist, they had to purge the party of all these people. In, 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 in a similar way, I guess, it was sort of like when you were the lone no vote. They never asked all the other 100, 400 and some others, why did you vote for this bill? It was always... How dare you? How dare you vote against the bill? And I think it's because the system really is so fragile. It's built on a house of sand that's based on lies. They can't stand one person standing up. You know, it's, it's the revelation of the truth. That bothers them. They don't like the truth. But it's the revelation that both parties uh, understand. It's the revelation that the government's all fake, too. Yeah. Everything is just a charade. And most disgusting is when... The individuals, most more Democrats than Republicans, but Republicans do it too, that they go up and they preach the Constitution on how wonderful it is and criticize the other side. At the same time, uh, they're, they're using it, and they might have a tinge of correctness in their charges, but 99% of the time, of everything they do in Washington, it just it totally ignores the existence of the Constitution. So that that is discussing, but the fake government that we have, the pretense that we have governments, that we have courts, and I I think that there's a lot of people who support Trump, and I keep hoping and praying that he really understands it all. But I tell you what, if he really wants to get to the bottom of it, he better know something about this case and do something about it. And I'll tell you what. I don't, if he's worrying about politics, I don't think it would hurt his reelection. I think that people will say, my gosh, finally they're telling the truth, you know, about what's going on. So uh, let's hope that uh, this ends, you know, ends well by getting more information. Now, truth is supposed to be helpful, so I don't think people should cringe. Oh, well, we, we can't face up to the truth. But if they find out that the government's crooked, <laughs> well, that, that's the good news. We're finding out what's happening. A crooked monetary system, a crooked foreign policy, and a crooked uh, budgetary policies that we have. It, it's all crooked in the sense it serves special interests. And uh, everybody says, oh, we're against that. We're against that. Uh, but then they have their but. But we have to do this, this, and this. Yeah, <clears throat> and of all people, again, Trump should understand what, what WikiLeaks did is bolster the position. Uh, uh, this is, and he can also make a contrast between a real whistleblower, a real truth teller like Assange and Snowden, and a fake one like the one that's trying to take down his own presidency. And he's completely blind to this. A couple of, a couple of other things. Former U UK ambassador, I think, to, uh, to uh, Tajikistan, uh, Craig Murray. A uh, friend of Assange's, he said he saw him for the first time when he appeared before the magistrate yesterday. He was shocked by Assange's appearance. He lost a great deal of weight. We'd heard that. said he was shocked by the rapid aging, the hair loss. He's only in his mid to late 40s. Mental deterioration. You touched on this earlier. He told the judge, I cannot think properly. He's having problems. He had problems rem remembering his date of birth even. He's confused. He's being treated and tortured. UN Special Rapporteur on Torture, Nils Meltzer, who's a hero in coming out, here's what he said. We came to the conclusion that he had been exposed to psychological torture for a prolonged period of time. And that is a medical assessment, end quote. And there doesn't seem to be many 
responding in a way that we think would be proper is let's get to the bottom of this. This end this. Why are we participating in this? It absolutely wouldn't be doing one thing if the our United States government wasn't fully behind this. Yes. It, then nobody would be doing this. And you know, remember how it all started. There was sexual charges against him by mm. the Swedish government. Yeah. Oh, sure. They were really worried about this, this person. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, when they had to talk about it in court, uh, that charge disappeared. Yeah. I do want to uh, use a quote here also to make our point uh, coming from Pompeo. Mm. Uh, and uh, it's very clear where they're coming from. Uh, quote, he says, WikiLeaks walks like a hostile intelligence service and talks like a hostile intelligence uh, service. And uh, so therefore, you know, he walks and talks, oh, so therefore he, he is, you know, that attitude. Um, Assange and his ilk, personal uh, Sikh, personal self-aggrandizement through the destruction of Western values. So they, you know, the Democrats do that all the time. They commit a crime, then they turn around and blame the Republicans for it. But this is exactly what he's doing. Yeah. He, he, he's saying that, uh, that, that, Pompe that uh, Assange is destroying values at the same time th this case is destroying any sense of justice in our courts. And uh, then uh, uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions at the time had a statement about this too. And this, this to me is rather glib. Uh, it's not as dramatic, but it's glib. We're, we've already uh, begun to step up our efforts and whenever a case can be made, we will seek to put the people in jail. <laughs> you know, that sounds like, it sound, doesn't sound like justice, but no. uh, I know what he's saying. So and that is threat, threat with jail. And of course, uh, you know, you mentioned before about how the Russians, the Soviets, would work and, drop, and beat people down. And uh, you could see that he's on the verge of not, uh, he's, he's still alert enough to say, I'm confused on what you're doing. Why don't you give me a break? Yeah. But, but no, they're, they're, not, they're not likely to do that. So what if they get him semi-comatose and he signs up? Ah, he confessed we to got it all. Yeah. Oh, good. We're going to give you only a life sentence instead of the, the death penalty, yeah. and we're going to kill you slowly. Yeah. Uh, it, it is not a good day for the United States of America by us ignoring this. We, we want people to know about it, and I think there's more support for Assange and Manning and, 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 the, and the different people who have told the truth than most people realize. Most people haven't heard it either. If they heard it, they might think about it and say, oh, no, we believe in we believe in the justice system. We know it's messed up. Well, this is one place where it could be cleaned up if people said and rallied uh, to Assange's uh, support and, and let them know. There are groups out there trying to support Assange, but uh, it's very difficult under today's circumstances. You know, and here's one of the statements that uh, he was quoted in this hearing when he was told that he couldn't prepare his case. No, forget it. You don't get the time. You can't, as you point out, you can't deal with your attorneys, you can't see your writing. This is really a quote out of Kussler. It really is a quote out of a victim at a show trial. Here's what he said. Totally broken man. I don't understand how this is equitable. This superpower had 10 years to prepare for this case and I can't access my writings. It's very difficult where I am to do anything, but these people have unlimited resources. They are saying journalists and whistleblowers are enemies of the people. They have unfair advantages dealing with documents. That's Assange yesterday, and that really does sound like something, someone who's a victim of a show trial. Let's not forget uh, Chelsea Manning is being held in jail indefinitely because she refuses to testify against WikiLeaks. Here's another disgusting stain on America. Here's how I would close. Do something for Julian Assange. He's done something for all of us. He spoke at our conference, remember, in 2017, uh, right when all this was really coming to a head. He has done something for all of us at the sacrifice of himself. We need to do something for Julian Assange. Whatever you can do, call your Congress member. Call anyone. Talk to anyone. Let's let America understand that this is a terrible injustice. This speaks terribly about America and our system. We won't stand for it. Do something today for Julian Assange. Boy, that, that's good advice, and uh, I certainly agree with that. And there are groups out there, if you just look around and get on the Internet, you can find groups that will support uh, Assange. And numbers are important. 
yes, I know the story that leadership is important. That seven or eight percent of the leadership brings the larger number of people together. But you still need support by the larger number of people, and that's what he needs right now to show that there's not ten or twenty or two hundred or four hundred people here in this country that uh, still believe in and you know uh, justice in the court and uh, fair hearing. He's not getting them. It's very clear. And to say that we don't know enough about it and we're going to close our eyes, I don't think that's right. We should open up our eyes if we care a lick about what is going on, if we care about our liberties. And the whole thing is, if things like this can get passed, oh, well, it's just this guy. He, he's from Australia, and he was messing around and getting involved, and, and he's just one guy. Yeah, that's the way it starts. But right now, there's a lot more people being involved in the abuse by government because every one of us is being surveilled in this in this country. So nothing is secret, and that's why Ed Snowden was so important. He he told us about the surveillance of our government, and he of course became uh, somebody now that has has no country, a man without a country. He's committed treason, and therefore he deserves the death penalty. It's terrible that truth tellers are punished like this. So all I can say is we want to do our part and do our best to encourage people to try to understand this issue. We've been looking at it for a long time. And when you come to this, do something about it. Everybody has a job to do about it. Talk about it, if nothing else, because this is an injustice that will come back to haunt us if uh, this goes down and, and they, they, they literally destroy this man and put him in prison and he dies in prison or they put him away for life. That is going to be a tragedy if that happens. Let's do whatever we can to prevent that. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report. Please come back soon.